So hematology, we're just going to cover a few of them real quick. Sickle cell, hemophilia, thrombophilia, and anemia. Okay, these are all blood problems. There's a plethora of bleeding disorders out there. Uh, I have one myself that we will definitely not talk about. Um, but there's a whole, all sorts. But these are the big ones that we need to be concerned about. Okay. So blood is made up of four components, right? Our red blood cells carry oxygen. Our white blood cells fight infection. Platelets clot. Plasma makes uh, fluid. Okay. The transportation medium. Plasma also carries CO2, as we've come to find. Carries CO2 back to the lungs. Any confusion over red, white, platelets, plasma. Okay. Sickle cell. So sickle cell disease, inherited disorder, red blood cells. So the red blood cells, they look, if you look at a picture of them, to me, they look like toenail clippings. Like they, they don't have that nice little inner tube shape that we want red blood cells to have. They, they're literally shaped like a sickle. Okay. It is an inherited, inherited disease, disorder, mostly African descent, okay? And then Caribbean and South American also, because if we think about our glorious world history, there was a lot of slave trade, right? And the Caribbean and South America were hit pretty heavy, or not hit heavy, but they had Africans coming into those areas also, so sickle cell started to develop. Fun fact, people with sickle cell don't get malaria. And that's a pretty big uh, African disease, right? So misshapen red blood cells lead to dysfunction in oxygen binding and unintentional clot formation. Okay, they, if we think of our normal red blood, su red blood, su red blood cells, they're that little inner tube, right? And they hold up all those oxygen molecules on our hemoglobin. Sickle cellers, they don't have that nice big circle, so they, they hold less oxygen. So if they're holding less oxygen, what vital sign do you think is going to take a hit? They're SpO2, yeah. And they can also lead to unintentional clot formation. Right, we know the shape of them. If they're toenail shaped, crescent moon shaped, right, and then they're going through the blood, they're going to start tangling up into each other. All right, that's why sickle cell is a thing. Um, so sickle, sickled cells. Um, my aunt was a ER nurse in Manhattan for a long time. She used to call them sicklers. Um, she really liked them for some reason because she liked the IV challenge on them. Anyway, unrelated. They usually have a shorter lifespan. Okay. And it's because they have more cellular waste products that contribute to their sludgy blood, right? If they're unable to really get rid of, if our red blood cells help get rid of toxins or get rid of the waste products, they can't get rid of as many. So it's constantly cycling through them. Okay, they typically have a lower um, life expectancy. So typically with sickle cell anemia people, they, will they can become anemic. Okay, their red blood cell count will get low because obviously they don't have a ton of full red blood cells. They can start to develop gallstones just because of the formation of the blood through the liver, okay, as that's passing through. Jaundice, once again, playing to liver dysfunction, and then splenic dysfunction. All of their organs are gonna have a harder time, especially the ones that filter out um, waste from the blood, right? Because the red blood cells aren't the same. They're getting hung up and snagged on stuff because they look like little toenails. <clears throat> They can also start getting ischemia, right? And we know that they have that abnormal clotting property about them because of their shape. So they can become ischemic. They can start having chest pain, things like stroke, right? Our secret handshake starts to come into effect. Um, joint necrosis. Their joints, because your cartilage in your joints, right? That what lines your bones to form a joint. Um, will start to become damaged because of the oxygen distribution. They're not getting enough air to keep themselves alive, essentially. So a lot of times they'll end up getting total knee, uh, total knee or total joint replacements. It's going to be painful, right, because it's going to get into it. It's just little pokey things, basically, all in your blood. Okay, so a lot of times they have pain at joints because that's the places where they kind of coagulate together. Okay. Um, Organ dysfunction, retinal hemorrhaging. They can start popping blood vessels in their eyes, okay? Just because, once again, shape. And then increased risk of infection. Okay, they can have an increased risk of infection because their blood is at a dysfunction, right? They're not, they cannot fully um, oxygenate or uh, perfuse, that's a better way to say. They can't fully perfuse the organs that help with our um, immune system, right? 
i.e. splenic dysfunction, right? Our spleen makes white blood cells, so if our spleen is being affected by the red blood cells, they're not going to make enough white blood cells. Does that make sense? Did I say that? I know I said a lot of cells back to back to back. Okay. These are sickle cells. Yep. Are they, like that's the side view, if you looked at them from the front, are they still like a circle or like, oh, Maybe not toenail clippings, but that's what they always remind me of is toenail. Yeah. And then is it all of the red blood cells or is it just some I think it's just like a, a percentage of their blood cells. I think that's where like the severity levels start playing in. Okay. Talk about bleeding disorders, hemophilia, okay? Clotting disorders rather. These people will bleed. It is a rare disease. Hemophilia hasn't, uh, well, it's, I'm going to backtrack. Anyone ever seen that old animated movie, Anastasia? Mm -hmm. So, fun fact about the reality, that was, a, that, obviously not all of that really happened in the movie, but um, when the czars in Russia were overthrown, the reason Rasputin was even around was because the youngest child was a hemophiliac. And they thought that his witchcraft would fix his blood. What? He took away the aspirin. He stopped doctors from using the aspirin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because aspirin is an antiplatelet congregate, congregant, coagulant, that might be the word. It stops platelets from getting together. But yeah, so hemophilia is mostly males. It is a recessive trait. It lives on the um, X chromosome, which females have an XX, males have an XY. So if a female has it on one, right, if they, they get it from their mom, so they're an XX, they have one infected chromosome, the other one is free. Now, if that person has a child and that, the mom decides to give the, or not decides, but the mom gives an X to the son and the dad gives a Y to the son, there's only one X, right? So that person is gonna be a positive hemophiliac. Um, it's actually, there's a lot of clotting factors in your blood and I believe it's like clotting factor five or seven, I can't remember which one, there's like nine total. Um, but it's a disruption of that clotting factor. So these people just do not clot. In fact, uh, like a paper cut is a potential life threat to them because they will not stop bleeding. Um, and people can bleed out in weird ways. Genghis Khan died of a bloody nose. Fun facts. Okay, so decreased ability to create a clot after an injury can be life-threatening. Often prescribe medications to replace the clotting factor, whichever one it was, okay? And it releases the stored clotting factors they already have or prevents the breakdown of blood clots. Now, let's talk about hemophiliacs if you get the chance, right? It's not very common, one in 20,000, okay? Um, but they're getting medications, right? They're getting clotting factor medications. So if they're getting stuff to help them clot, what are they putting themselves at risk for? Heart right, secret hand stick. Yeah, PE, heart attack, stroke. Right, because they're increasing their clotting factor, so they have an increased risk of forming different clots. Uh, these people also require joint, or will also develop long-term joint problems because they can't recover, they can't heal. Okay, any damage to a joint is going to start, is going to basically stay bad, right, because they can't clot around it. Platelets help us heal, and if they don't, if they're unable to clot, they can't do that. Uh, How do they, like, survive surgery? Uh, lots of blood products. They go through like units of blood per surgery, like five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Is that something that like gets worse with age? Or, like if you're a kid born with it. You're... Mm, I wouldn't say it gets worse with age. I would say the likelihood of surviving to a long age is decreased, right? Because any sort of cut could be a life threat to them. Yeah. Um, bleeding in the brain, right? If oh, do you have a question, Bryce? Yeah. And then he like fell when he was riding a scooter in the front yard and everyone freaked out. Yeah. Mm. You're like, it's a big deal as he's bleeding to death in the front yard. <laughs> it's casual. It's casual bleeding. <laughs> um, bleeding in the brain is an increased risk, right? I would argue that any sort of increased bleeding or any bleeding risk comes from, or, oh my God, this increased your bleeding risk with any trauma towards an organ, right? Any organ that's gonna bleed, but specifically the brain, right? If they have a subdural bleed, they're gonna bleed very quickly into that brain space. And then they can develop thrombosis, the development of clots because of their treatment, right? We talked about the secret handshake, right? They're at a, an increased risk for that. 
okay, as long if they're getting treatment anyway. Okay, so that kind of ties us into thrombophilia, okay? These people produce clots. They produce too many clots. So disorder in the body's ability to maintain the smooth flow of blood through the venous and arterial system, okay? Concentration of particular elements in the blood creates clogging or blocking issues. A lot of times these people might have extra platelets, they might have extra clotting factors, okay? They're gonna throw, they, they have a increased risk potentially of DVTs. What's a DVT? Deep vein thrombosis. What is, it, what is a thrombosis though? Or thrombus, what is a thrombus? A non-moving non clot, right? Or a non-moving obstruction. So by extension, if they're at an increased risk of DVTs, they're at an increased risk of what in our secret handshake? Pulmonary embolism, right? If we, if we follow the track, right? The vein's gonna dump into the vena cava, which is gonna go to the heart on the right side, and then it's gonna go to the lungs. Right, so thrombophiliacs have a higher likelihood of clotting related issues, okay? So generally, they just, they clot more, or they clot more, okay? And they have an increased risk of spontaneously developing clots. Uh, DVTs, just kind of talked about it, right? Common medical problem in sedentary patients, people who do not move, and in patients who have had recent surgery or injury. Remember when we were thinking back to PE, demographics of increased risk, right? If someone's like, yeah, I, I have a history of DVTs and I just got off a flight from Japan, right? That's a lot of, of stagnant time, right? So the second they start actually moving, they can start sending clots. So a lot of times these people will take blood thinners, Sorelto, Eliquis, met, uh, Metformin, not Metformin, Metformin's for diabetes. Uh, warfarin, that's what I was thinking. Eliquis, Zarelto, uh, Warfarin, okay? Um, a lot of people will wear compression stocks, or socks, stockings. They'll get those like knee-high, really tight socks to help prevent these. <clears throat> and then they make mechanical devices. Has anyone ever had a surgery where they had to wear that thing on their calves that squeezed their leg? Well, the whole idea of that, even me moving right now is keeping blood circulating. So if someone's gonna be laying in a, a hospital bed, they'll put these little, basically massagers on their calves that'll keep blood circulating so it, it prevents the uh, clotting. Okay, they don't have that buildup. <clears throat> so joint replacement comes from DVT and a lot of times they're sedentary. So this is gonna be like older folks sitting in their chair um, when people have DVTs, there'll be a really definitive line between where the clot is. It'll be really red uh, towards the feet and it'll be a normal color um, above that. Be that line is where the clot is and everything below that is just gonna be pooling blood, right? Because we've got a blockage, we've blocked our creek, all the blood is gonna start backing itself up at that point. So they'll get edema and swollen and painful. Uh, treatments, anticoagulant therapy, meds, and then clot from DVT can travel with patient's lower extremity to their lungs, causing a pulmonary embolism. So you guys are getting smart. I even have to talk about it, and you guys gave me that answer. We're learning, people. That's proof. Anemia is an abnormally low amount of red blood cells, okay? Basically, if we don't have enough red blood cells, we can't transfer enough oxygen, okay? So, um, and it's very common, there's one demographic, not one, but there's a demographic that is at a higher risk for anemia. Anyone know what it is? Females, because they bleed regularly, right? They, they, they bleed monthly. So by losing all that red blood cells, it's very common. Um, people who are anemic, usually the cause, or what they need to do is they need to eat more iron, particularly like red meat. Um, Anemic people could do with a steak. That would do them good. Okay, the, the iron in the red meat helps uh, reproduce red blood cells in the body. Okay. <coughs> and pulse ox may indicate an inadequate saturation even though the tissues are hypoxic. Okay, ask questions if people are anemia or anemic. One easy test to see if people are anemic is you pull down their eyelid. If you pull down their eyelid and it's not pink, it's a white color, they're probably anemic. So they don't have enough red blood cells. Yeah, you look at the inside. Yep. Yep, you can also see de dehydration there, but it's uh, primarily for anemia. Yep, yep, yep. Any questions on anemia so far? Okay. Scene safety, blood, right? Just 
make sure you're wearing gloves. Um, people with, well, with these conditions, you won't, you're not super worried, but like people who have like AIDS and HIV and um, hep C, in my personal experience, they always love to mention that after I've started poking with a needle and there's blood out. So ask lots and lots of good questions, okay. Um, physical f uh, findings for sickle cell crisis, swelling in the fingers, toes, what's priapism? The, uh, the yeah. yeah, it's an erection. They have uncontrollable erections. It's priapism. Uh, it's also very common. That's actually a, another potential finding for head injuries too. So if you see a dude who got hit over the head with like a crowbar, I don't know, I'm making stuff up, and he's got a rager, you know, it's like, whoa, he did a good job on his head, right? Um, or he's really excited they got hit in the head. One of the two, but more than likely priapism. Okay. Um, history taking, all of the bleeding stuff, you're gonna have to get a history. We cannot tell, right? Unless they're bleeding and bleeding and bleeding, then you can ask, are you on any bl uh, blood thinners or do you have a bleeding disorder, okay? Outside of that, you're not gonna know, so you're gonna have to ask. Part of the sample history. Secondary, deal with the injuries. Other than that, we're just gonna be monitoring vital signs, okay? Uh, reassess vital signs frequently, probably every five, depending on the situation, 15 if you don't need to. Okay, so our, our treatments, okay? It's mostly supportive care. Stop bleeding where we can, we'll get moving fast, okay? If it's something like a DVT, they have a thrombolytic disorder, they have a DVT, well, worst case scenario is that's gonna end up as a PE, so it's gonna, we need to get air going on them. We need to get oxygen going, okay? Treat the symptoms as you see them. Treat the signs as you see them. Okay.